Hello, everybody, and welcome to this evening edition of the On Air Advocate, episode 30. Where at the On Air Advocate, we look to provide education, support, and empowerment for all of those with different abilities, mental and medical illnesses, and their caregivers. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Tammy Flynn, and I am the host and producer of the On Air Advocate. And I am super excited if you guys are tuning in this evening and watching us live or if you are catching it on the replay. Now, as you know, at the Honor Advocate, every week or two, we always pick a topic that we usually focus on for a week, two weeks, sometimes even a, a whole month. But we are in a two-week series right now where we are going through chronic pain as well as pain management. And when you think about things, over 100 million Americans suffer from chronic pain on a daily basis. And so to kick off this chronic pain series, I am super, super, excited to have Denise. We've been talking about her last name this whole time. I'm not even going to play. <laughs> Archia. Archia. Denise yeah. Archia. She has her master's in social work. She is an advocate. She is a certified adolescent life coach, and she is the owner and founder of Chronic Connection, which when I saw that platform, I was like blowing away what she has put together for our teens and youth that suffer from chronic pain. So I want to welcome you, Denise. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you. Thank yes, you. And, I, and I, I, I'll get your last name at some point, but it's it doesn't, okay. It doesn't need to be today. It doesn't need to be today. It's very hard. So it's all right. Just say quesadilla. That's what we say. Quesadilla. Quesadilla. Archia. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So can you kind of take us through how Chronic Connection even started, you know, kind of that backstory yeah. and then take our viewers kind of through what the Chronic Connection is all about? Yes. Um, we started, I was actually, I had another business that I um, had co-founded and I was teaching, uh, it's an enrichment center. So I was teaching a number of classes, one of which was um, a homeschool um, type class. And uh, I had a student in my class by the name of Sadie and uh, she's watching or does watch. Hi, Sadie. <laughs> and uh, she, she, she's girl. my love. I, I've known Sadie is now 13 and I've known Sadie since she was five, I believe it is, four or five. Um, so she came into the class. Um, Sadie has juvenile arthritis, um, among other things. And um, my background is working as a pediatric social worker uh, in, in various pediatric hospitals. Um, and I've worked with a number of patients with chronic conditions. Um, and so, um, so meeting Sadie, it, it kind of tied that back in. Um, throughout the years, my, I just kept being pulled back to work with the chronic, uh, chronically ill pediatric community. Okay. And so it was, we just started looking at things. Dawn and I were talking one day, her mom, Dawn Fasop is her mom. We were talking about it uh, as Sadie was approaching uh, the preteen years. Mm -hmm. um, Dawn was noticing more and more um, just things online, social media, um, with teens, particularly in, uh, in that arena of juvenile arthritis. Um, but noticing that the, there just weren't that many services um, across the board for the teens. Would you so say like lack of support? Lack of support, um, a lot of, what we saw really a lot of honestly was um, a lot of teens that were almost trying to one up each other um, with how serious or how bad or how much pain or how whatever, how bad things were versus let's, what's the, you know, let's take that and turn it around and say, okay, yeah, we, we know this is horrible. You know, sometimes it really, really sucks. And what can we do right. um, though, despite that? And so there was, she was seeing a lot of this kind of thing and just not a lot of services. So I started researching it and I couldn't find anything um, really to support that particular age range from dependent teenager to independent or as independent as possible, as I like to say, um, adult. And that's a big, uh, very important time 
kind of um, crucial, crucial time period. It, so it really that, is. Would you say that's like between that 16 year old age to like 25 or 24? Uh, right about that. Yes. Um, okay. even, even younger, but, but particularly that 16 to, to 24, mm -hmm. um, is, is I think extremely, um, crucial, as you said, and, um, developmentally. And, and we know that just, you know, any team, it's a time of struggle. There's so much that, um, you know, that they, they have to deal with and, and, and go through and, and learn who they are. And, um, right. and on top of having life. all this chronic, either pain, so you add that to the mix. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, it's a right. really, yeah, it's very important. Um, and, um, so, so when I, I started really researching and it didn't see anything and I thought, wow, mm -hmm. okay then I guess that's what we need to do is create something. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the way so, so many great things start though. <laughs> it is, right? Yeah. So, so we, I, I really didn't have a solid um, plan at that point. And what I did is I started doing some beta testing by interviewing parents as well as teens themselves about what, um, just things that were important, things that they found that they, uh, you know, might need, things that were and I started finding commonalities and that helped me to, to figure out things that we could offer as a service that might help. Okay. And so that was, that was the beginning. We launched about three, almost three and a half years ago um, at this point, just very lightly. And we've, um, we've really grown by, I think one of the, the different things that I, I have done and that we've done with this program is really looked at what they're looking for. And we've continued to develop it and develop our programs based on what people need. Because um, right. what's kind of cool, your like your advisory board, right? It, yes. It's all made up. Of, it is. Of, of I have young yes. adults. Yes, and early on, I started out. We we have a, a teen young adult advisory board um, that started out with our three members: um, Nancy, who was in um, England. And I found her just because I loved her blog and started following her and just said, oh my gosh, I love what you're doing. And would you, you know, mind helping with chronic connection? Um, and then Allie, who is um, in Tennessee now, she was in Tampa, Florida at the time. So she was closer here. Um, and um, Allie um, is also, she's the one that's going to be on the program. Yes. I mean, yes. And now Allie, she suffers from her chronic pain in what areas? She has also juvenile arthritis and she, okay. um, Dawn knew, Dawn and Sadie knew Allie and her family because of that in the conference. They both have that same common denominator right. with juvenile Allie's, arthritis. Right. Allie's older, but, but because of being at conferences together, they knew each other. Um, and, so, so Allie agreed to be part of it. At the time, I want to say, I think she was 16 or 15 okay. even when we started talking. And um, then Kirsten is in Belgium. And again, just found her through social media. We started chatting. And um, to this point, Kirsten has created, she's uh, redone our website for us. And she has, uh, she's the, really the main producer um, of Ask a Spoonie, our YouTube program. And she's now, what's a spoonie? I saw that on your website, and I'm like, what's a spoonie all about? I don't know okay. about that. So that is something I know. In, in, the, in the chronic illness community, um, it's, it's a very common term, and it's something pretty much everybody, most everyone knows. Um, but what it is, it's a word um, that was derived from um, a story written many years ago um, by uh, Christine Miserandino, and she, it's called the Spoon Theory, um, S-P-O-O-N, like, and so what she did, um, she was out to dinner, and just very really briefly to tell you, this doesn't even cover it, it's a wonderful story to look up, um, but she was out with a friend, and her friend wanted to know um, what it was like to have a chronic illness, and so they're out to dinner, and Christine was trying to figure out how to explain it. And so she went around and gathered up um, like a bouquet of, of spoons, basically, um, from the different, you know, tables. Mm -hmm. And she just kind of went through her day um, and with her friend. And for each activity, each thing you do, these are the spoons you start with. And at the end of the day, what you're left with. Um, and you don't get any more. Some people also refer to it like uh, there's another term going around currently called the unchargeables. And it's basically 
you, you, you get what you get when they, a lot of times when you have a chronic illness, you go to sleep at night and, and you don't recharge like, you know, somebody who's not living with chronic illness, um, chronic pain, you go to sleep, you get your nice, you know, sleep and you're ready to go the next day. You're feeling good. Um, someone with a chronic illness and in particularly with chronic pain may have uh, what they call pain somnia. Um, the pain keeps them awake at night. They can't sleep. Um, or maybe it's because of medications, or maybe there are just, you know, different issues going on um, in a different way from the illnesses. But, but they're, they're, you're, you start out low, and it never fully gets back up to what a normal person right, or, right. An, or a well person's capacity really is. And so because the spoon theory, just it just became popular. People identified because it was the first time I think really – it had been explained that way and that somebody else could understand even a little bit. And so it became very popular within the chronic illness community. And now if you look up the, the word spoonie, it's a very, it's an identifying marker throughout the social media. Um, you'll just find all kinds of groups and, and people. And so, yeah. Where they can identify together with their different chronic pain and chronic illnesses, correct? And chronic illnesses, that's correct, okay. yes. Okay, and so you guys have, like, do you guys have a, a Spoonie, I thought I saw that, like, a Spoonie card exchange? We do. We have, um, that's one of our programs, is our Spoonie card swap. Um, it started really, really small. We had probably 10 people, and I was doing this all by hand, but we had, um, from a couple of different countries, it's open to anyone um, of all ages. And so this is something we do free for um, the chronic uh, illness community. And um, so anyone with any kind of chronic condition qualifies, and of all ages, and uh, it's an actual card swap. And okay. we do this about five times a year and um, roughly every other month. And we try to do it in relation to certain holidays, too, if we can. Um, and so it has uh, you you can either make a card or buy a card. It doesn't matter. It's free to join. And you get to you get one person's name to send a card to. And then someone else gets your name to send a card to you. So you potentially have two new connections. Um, and we do divide it by age group. Um, as well as whether you want to send locally or internationally. And at this point, we have over 15 countries, I think, at last count that have Oh, my gosh. So it's much more than 10 people now, right? Or yes. five people? Okay. Yeah. It's a few hundred people now. <laughs> so, but we want to grow. That's amazing to watch that grow. Yeah. That it was amazing. I actually have to thank um, the Aaron McDowell at the Mighty. Um, and if anyone doesn't know about the Mighty, um, it is a there's a it's a wonderful program um, that has I believe over a million uh, readership now. Yes. Um, and like online with all of the different yes, stories online you can just look at right of it. it's great um but erin saw about one of our card swaps and she wrote an article about it and overnight we went from you know 20 i think at most or 25 to probably 200 and oh, and wow. it was amazing and so now we're, we're hoping to grow it even more um that like i i was mentioning to you earlier we're really looking for uh, we'd love to have sponsors for that so that we can uh just build a website that can handle it um oh for just the cards just swap. for the cards what because right now That's we're doing it by hand we're still doing it by oh, hand and there's okay. just three of us and so you know you get 300 people to match and that's a lot it's a lot of work to do and and it but we would love to grow it so that we could it, right. because we really don't advertise so if we did we'd love to like build it up to where we right it would be a spoonie sponsor wouldn't that be really yeah <laughs> that'd be really awesome cool. that would be awesome now what are the other things with chronic connection that you offer and i know i mean from myself talking with you as well as looking at your site i'm gathering that community between some of those girls yes. that's one of the biggest yes. parts of the platform altogether is them yes. being able to share right. kind of like their own private i don't want to say like the kind of like nurturing counseling each other well, right? kind of. They're supporting each other and they're sharing. And it really, what we do, um, one thing, because when you have a chronic illness and chronic pain, it's often, not for everyone, but for some, it's very difficult to get out and socialize. 
the same way mm -hmm. that you would if you didn't have these illnesses. So a lot of them do turn to social media. Um, and so what in virtual uh, kinds of things. So what we decided to do is have a virtual platform. And so everything we do is um, for the most part is um, is that way. And we I started, I guess, a couple of years ago doing virtual pajama parties. I thought, well, this will be fun because one of the things, again, uh, one of the sayings is, you, you know you're a spoonie when you have more pajamas than you do regular clothes. Or oh. yeah. So I thought, oh, how about a spoonie pajama party? But then I thought, gosh, that leaves out the guys probably for the most part, right? So right. then we opened it up and decided uh, to actually make a membership program out of it. And um, so it's for ages 16 to 24. And I do have a separate board for that, that Nancy Alley and Kirsten are part of. Um, but I have others, uh, Allie, another Allie, uh, Peyton, Abby, Beth, Nadesh, and Fuchsia. And um, we uh, four of those are in the U.S. And then we also have um, Beth is in England as well as Nancy. And Nadesh is from the Netherlands. So we've got this uh, continental contingency of... Uh, in, in a variety of ages. And what they've done is they ended up, uh, we've had a number of other people that have joined different parties, but they kind of became the mainstay. And we began having parties every couple of weeks or hangouts. Mm -hmm. We'll have a hangout where we just get together to chat. Um, and then we'll have parties where we get to do fun things like dress up, like the Halloween party. Everybody comes in costume and we play games and uh, we just do right everything. Online. Right online, yeah. virtually. And it is so much fun. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a good way to connect with others that get you. And that's mm -hmm. part of what is, is kind of, they don't always find with their friends. And um, as Allie will tell you, um, when, when we are on one of the things, um, she'll say that she has her chronic illness friends and she has her friends that really don't know anything about her chronic illness. And then she has those in between that, that know a little bit, but don't really get it because they're also, not, they're not chronically ill. Right. And it's one of the things that across the board, and I, I do want to say this, it's, it's something that I discovered with every person I interviewed when I first interviewed, and it's held consistent throughout. When someone is diagnosed or tells you or tells friends or whomever about, uh, and family even, about having a chronic illness, many well, always, I, I think from what I can see, there are people who kind of fall out of their lives. They lose people. Um, and so one of, one of the, the things that I want to do with this, one of my main platforms is to have the people that are affected, these teens and young adults, to have their voices heard. Mm -hmm. I, I want them to tell their stories and I want them to share because it is, it's, it's their lives. You know, this is not, it's not about me. It's about them and it's about their experience. And I want them to be able to share and educate because I think the more that the well community knows, then the more we can realize, Oh, here's how we can help, mm -hmm. you know, and here's what you I can think do. That's so similar. It's, it's has so many similarities to those of caregivers that if you're not traveling that journey, you know, when you become a caregiver, a lot of times yeah. those friends, other people, they all kind of fall off and you're trying to find community and you're trying to find people who get it. Yeah. And when you meet someone that has a, a, a child or they're, they're, they're caring for their aging loved one or whatever, it's like instantaneously, you might live in different states, different countries, you get it. You get it. You yeah. get it automatically. It's just yeah. right there. And so for these teens and young adults, I can just imagine, I mean, I, I can't wait to um, chat with Allie, but just that You're community sure. that they must feel when they meet others all over the place that, you know, right. get what's, they're, what's going on with them. Um, and yeah, and the card swap, it, it does the same thing. And again, it's for all ages. Um, our main focus is on that um, 16 to 24 age range. It is for teens and young adults. However, what I have found in doing this card swap is it just un, it really is heartwarming. Um, as well as sometimes just it really, it's just really touching because you realize how isolated sometimes people feel. And you don't realize how something like a simple card from another person or being able to send something and feel useful and feel like you're helping someone else 
you know, you might be bedridden, but you can help someone when you send a card, make their day brighter. And that is, um, it, it's just extremely rewarding. And I think that, um, you know, it, it's why I really, we want to keep that card swap going, even though it's not really our primary focus as far as that goes. Right. It is still the Spoonie community. And, and a lot of these people, we were hoping to eventually they can become mentors, you know, for our younger. Right. Right. And I, I think that that trickles the same as finding those support groups, you know, right. um, exactly. for, whether you're, a, mm-hmm. whether you're a teen, whether you're a young adult, you know, um, yes. or you're an adult that's, you know, suffering to have that kind of community is so important. So now going to your website and you said one of the girls that, that is inside of the Spoonies. Yes. She, she built the website. It's a phenomenal website. She didn't build it. My friend Dina um, in Baltimore. Well, she, did, she does all the stuff on it. And then Kirsten came in and just kind of revamped it after a couple of years to kind of okay. you know, jazz it up, make it look a little more appealing, I think, to teens and um, so forth. And so she did that. Um, so talented. She's <laughs> very talented. She's, yes. And so... Um, it's amazing. And she's in Belgium. And so I think that that has been so fun that, that, you know, working with her, um, one of the things that, that you might not realize too, and I haven't met everybody that I work with so closely. Kirsten, I finally got to meet last year. She came to Orlando with her father and I got to meet them and go, Oh yeah. Because in Wisconsin, yeah, I don't, it was I don't today, yeah. but you're in Orlando or you're in that you're in Florida where it's warmer. So we so, usually don't. <laughs> we just, guys, yeah, everybody comes here. So, so, and the same with Nancy. Nancy's been here and she'll be back in the fall. So I'll get to spend some time with her. But um, Allie, the one that is going to be on your show, I've never met Allie in person. And okay. I haven't met any of the other girls that are on our board in person. And so, but it, it, so it's interesting the friendships you can develop um, even right. virtually. Um, but yeah, Kirsten has, is a key part. Kirsten at this point, I would, she could sign my name to something. She knows exactly, you know, um, where we're going with this because it is part of her. She helped develop it it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so on the, where I was going with that with on the website, what are all the different areas? So I know there's a spoony area on there and the card swap and then how, what are the different sections of it? What are the other services that are offered? So we have, uh, like I said, the membership program. And for that we are all we do and we will be actually offering scholarships. Um, it is a paid program. Um, it's 25 a month and it has a number of different things, um, virtual parties, uh, conference calls, um, social media office hours, uh, virtual parties for parents as well. We wanted to include them too, uh, as well as matching with a Spoonie mentor if that's desired. Um, but we really don't want anyone to have to pay if they um, are unable to because um, there are so many costs that go along with um, living with a chronic illness um, that uh, you just don't even think about, like traveling to and from hospital, having to stay. Hospitals and and treatment with specialists aren't necessarily in your backyard. And so a lot of people have to travel a good distance and that means hotels and food and all of that, um, gas and et cetera. So we really are looking for, and and we're we're working on fundraising and some other things um, and looking for scholarships for that. So we're gonna be making that available as soon as possible. As a matter of fact, we're uh, creating a website for that specifically. So, so we'll have that soon and I'll let you know when we do. Um, we also, we, I do provide individual um, and family coaching. I am a certified um, life coach um, as well as a, have a master's in social work. Um, we have our um, Ask a Spoonie program, um, which is really one of my favorites. It's on our YouTube channel. And what we do is we um, get questions um, from different uh young adults, teens, it could even be adults with chronic illness. Um, One of our first and most popular ones was somebody um, said that they were going to be going to a new school um, as I think a a senior and they were going to need to use a wheelchair. And she said, you know, I don't want to, I'm embarrassed. I don't want to do it, um, but I need to do it. Um, Do you guys have any advice for me on that? Well, it just so happened Allie had had that experience the year before and had just moved to a new school as a junior and had to use her wheelchair. And it's, it's a big deal for some of them having to use a wheelchair. And there's a whole 
thing, you know, we could talk about with that. But what was cool is she was able to answer this question, and, you know, in a video so that others could benefit from it as well um, and just talk about how she handled it. And, um, and so we do videos about all kinds of things like that. And so is um, that on the Chronic Connection YouTube channel? There's a link there uh -huh, for our YouTube channel, yes. Okay, and so it's the, it's the Ask a Spoonie, so they get to yes. ask the ask questions. And they answer. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And so is everyone that's answering those questions is between that age range of like yes. that 16 yes. to 24? Yes. We, we do occasionally have um, guests that are a little bit older, mm -hmm. um, young adults, but that, you know, maybe up to age, say, 30, um, young 30s. That, but most of the time, it's someone who's experienced um, either chronic illness as a young person, so they've had that similar journey, mm -hmm. or it might be someone talking about a diagnosis um, and how they deal with it. Um, you know, something like irritable bowel syndrome or, or more severe um, Crohn's disease and that kind of thing. That's kind of embarrassing a little bit, especially for a right. newly diagnosed person. How do I deal with this and talk about it? And how did you do it? So sometimes it's nice to have that older um, person's input too. So we do occasionally have guests for that, but primarily it is targeted for the 16 to 24 year old age group. That's awesome. I think that's phenomenal. Um, it, so people can go check out, they can go check out all the resources, all the videos yes. are up right on your YouTube channel. Yes, And you've been doing it for a while now, so I'm certain there's a lot of different topics. <laughs> that oh, have, there's, yes, there's a, yeah, there's quite a number of, of different topics. And of course, we have blog posts that we um, um, put up. We like to actually, we, we are always looking for someone who wants to share their um blog post and, and I mean, we're happy to post it on our website. I mean, we have criteria, of course, that we have to meet to do it, but, um, but we love to share um, right. blogs from other people as well. Um, again, one of the, the main things is, uh, you know, it's connecting, making a bridge uh, between the, the chronic illness community to the well community, as well as even to um, the hospital community. Um, and helping them to even understand what real life is like um, right. you know, outside of the hospital or outside of the clinics. And um, also to provide advocacy, to give a voice, um, and to also just help them connect with each other. Right. And I think what's so important, like you were saying, is that sometimes, especially in those teen years and kids going to school and whatnot that have chronic pain on a regular basis, sometimes if it's more of an invisible disability, yes. you know, where people can't physically see it, right. they don't always believe and they yes. don't know the extent of it. And so there's a lot of, um, a lot of support and communication that needs to happen behind that to kind of help those teens through that. There really, really is. And that is, that is something that is very, very common. Um, there's, um, I, I don't have the latest statistics, um, but the last statistics that I read, um, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome takes, the last time I saw it takes about seven to eight years for diagnosis. And that is one that does in part, you know, chronic pain is part of that. And mm -hmm. yet it's often just kind of brushed aside as growing pains. And so um, it does take very often um, advocating for yourself, advocating for your child um, and to, to get these diagnoses that will help get the services that are needed. Um, and so along the way, talking to others and being able to talk to somebody who understands what that is like to live, you know, with the chronic pain and with that often, often goes fatigue as well, of course. And, um, you know, to find that, oh, there's somebody else who experiences this too, mm -hmm. especially for those that are a little more rare, it's really helpful um, in particular because they, you know, you might, you might not just have somebody at your school that has the same kind of thing. If you have asthma, very likely somebody at your school has asthma. But yeah. if you have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or um, even cystic fibrosis or something like that, you're not necessarily going to find somebody in your school or your class that has that. And right. so, right. you know, it, it's nice to be able to connect with others that get you and, and can and help. And that's what the chronic connection is all about. It is. It is. It is. It is.
it's all about that. So, um, Denise, I'm going to drop below this live all of the, the contacts and connections so people can get connected mm -hmm. with you. Obviously, if anybody wants to be the Spoonie sponsor or Spoonie sponsor, it sounds yeah. like a fabulous thing to do. I mean, yes. and having yeah. all these young teens from all over the United States and all over the country to be able to participate, um, a great program. So we're going to drop all those below. And obviously, if anyone has any further questions from you, they can take you in there or they can find you right at your website which we will put as well yes awesome thank you yeah. so in closing anything to leave us with tonight I, I think the main thing is really our our tagline also kind of sums up the belief behind all of this and our tagline is because chronic doesn't mean can't um, right we, you just because you have a chronic illness or just because um, you have chronic pain, it doesn't mean your dreams stop or that your, your life is, it stops or, or that you can't have those same or similar dreams. You might have to make a bit of a shift, mm -hmm. but yes. you can, you know, adjustments along, but we all do. And that's part of life and part of growing. Um, and I think it's just, that is really that kind of the crux of this is that um, I feel, and we all feel that, uh, chronic illness shouldn't stop us from pursuing our dreams. That's right. That is right. So on that note, you're going to go enjoy the Florida weather and here in Wisconsin, yeah. like I was telling you, it's our first <laughs> warm day. So I think you're going to get out and about yourself outside um, <laughs> That's awesome. right now. So as you guys all know that if you want to find any of our other podcasts, YouTube tutorial videos, or any other information about the on-air advocate, you can go right on over to onairadvocate.com. We are so excited that Denise, you are here today and tonight to kick off our pain management and um, chronic pain series for the next two weeks. Please stay tuned. We have a lot of amazing guests that are coming up these next two weeks that are going to tackle in every single area. I'm also going to be sharing my son's personal story of chronic pain and trial and triumph um, after having a surgery that took 10 hours long and 26 doctors to heal um, some of that pain. And we are currently off of all pain medication now Ooh, that after is many, many years. So lots of input on that to give as well. But um, on that note, you all enjoyed this fabulous Monday night. And thank you again, Denise. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's good to Bye. see you. Again. Good to see you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.